hello there welcome back and this video we are going to learn windows 10 editions so windows 10 have at least six edition which you can see on the screen home edition pro pro education education pro for workstation and enterprise so why there are different edition microsoft have launched maybe you have the question so look at this maximum physical memory ram for home edition it it is 4gb ram for 32 bit operating system and it support up up to 128 gb ram for home edition professional edition will support up to 4gb ram for 32 bit operating system and up to 2 tb ram for 64 bit operating system in pro for workstation and enterprise edition it's the same for all 4GB RAM because 32-bit operating system only support up to 4GB RAM. Even you install Enterprise Edition, but if it is 32-bit operating system and you have 8GB RAM installed in your CPU, I mean you have added 8GB RAM in your CPU, but after installation you would be see only 4GB usable for 32-bit operating system. So make sure whenever you installing windows 10 operating system make sure you are selecting 64 bit operating system if you have more than 4 gb ram installed in your cpu as i said in my earlier video if you have less than 4 gb ram and always suggest to install 32 bit os because it uses very less memory to work faster so make sure while installing you are you are you are checking all the hardware which is installed in uh, in in your cpu so here we go we have a, a home edition professional edition professional for workstation enterprise so when you buy home edition you will get these features to be added into your windows 10 operating system home edition when you buy pro edition you will get these kind of features available in your operating system all right till this the silent file system refs if you're buying pro for workstation you will get this kind of features available in your windows 10 operating system for enterprise it's like all the features are available in enterprise that mean it's very costly but of course when you purchasing online you will get windows 10 home edition all right so when you're buying any laptop from the online they they install windows 10 home edition because it's compared to the professional or enterprise edition it's a uh, less cost that that's why they are you know uh, installing windows 10 to save uh, the price or you know reduce the uh, cost of the laptop so that's it guy let's uh, meet you in next video hello there in this video we are going to learn recommended hardware for windows 10 installation when we say recommended hardware for windows 10 installation that mean you just able to install ms office if you want to install photoshop or any other application you should need a additional ram so recommended hardware for windows 10 is 1 gb ram for 32 bit operating system 2 gb ram for 64 bit operating system for hard drive space if you are going to install operating system 32 bit you will need 16 gb free space should be available in the c drive if you are going to install 64 bit operating system 32 gb space should be available in the c drive this two thing you can just leave it because it's a default one which is coming with all cpu so we really not have to be worry on this two part but of course for ram you should have 1 gb ram for 32 bit operating system and 2 gb ram for 64 bit operating system let me give you some example i have this machine and it's a 64 bit so it's install ram is 2 gb and you you could say it's a windows 10 professional edition and it's a 64 bit operating system all right 
so you could say system type it's 64 bit operating system where i have installed 2 gb ram and it works fine it's work like charm all right suppose you you want to install some additional application like photoshop adobe whatever graphics so you will need additional ram for it let's see how much ram it's consuming at the moment so 50 percent of the ram it's consuming at the moment am and i'm not running any single application at the moment so that mean if i open some application the utili utilization of the memory will be going to be high now let's see so now it's increasing the size of memory as you see the excel and word will not take much of ram but if you want to install some graphics application like photoshop and any other katia any other graphics application it will consume more ram so you will need to have more ram in uh, your cpu to work faster if you if you think it's a you microsoft said we just need recommended hardware for 2 gb ram for 64 that mean it is recommended when you just install ms office not any other application all right so just ms office and now you're browsing internet explorer and the mozilla firefox the chrome so that's it if you want if you want to install some other application you should have additional ram to be added into your cpu so this is all about 64 bit i'll open the 32 bit operating system here we go go to properties now it's a 32 bit you can see 32 bit operating system and the install memory is 1 gb it is recommended by the microsoft so suppose you have you have just you know your hardware have just 1 or 2 gb ram i always suggest to in, you know install 32 bit operating system so it will work much faster compared to 64 bit because 64 bit operating system consume more ram that's it let's see you in next video in this video we are going to learn how to install windows 10 inside your pc so let's get it started you need to search for windows 10 iso download you will redirect to this page download windows 10 disk image iso file i just clicked on it you need to click on this download tool so this media creation tool will be downloaded you need to open it it's opening on my another screen so let me bring it up over here the another thing is we need to also download workstation player to create a virtual machine using that also file which we are downloading okay so now we are on this page say accept wait for some time to come up another option okay meanwhile we can download this uh, vmware workstation player so you can come here and just click on download so the iso file and this player we need it to create a virtual machine the windows 10 virtual machine okay inside your pc like upgrade this pc now if you do that your machine going to be upgrade okay so always select create create installation media we we are going to download iso file okay we are not going to upgrade our main machine all right say so next here you have to select uh, the both uh, because if you select 32 bit or uh, the iso file will have just 32 bit operating system if you select 64 bit the iso file will have 64 bit operating system only if you select both that mean you will get 32 bit as well as 64 bit in iso file okay you need to select language default language is english i'm just skipping as a default i just changed what i changed is both all right the next usb flash drive please don't select this option because we not going to be you know format the usb flash drive we need to save the iso file all right select iso file say next now it asking for you to save this file in somewhere all right so i'll make a c drive click on save 
I already downloaded this ISO file, so I'm ready for the installation. All right, yesterday I downloaded that one. This is the file which I downloaded early. Also, I I have already installed this VMware player. Okay, so I'm just opening that. Also, I will cancel this just to show you how it works. I went went through the all this step. So once you open this uh, VMware Workstation player, you will see nothing here. You can see it because I already created two two VMs inside this machine. All right. So now you have to click on create a new virtual machine. You have to select this option installer disk image file which we have downloaded the ISO file. Click on browse and go to the location where you have where you have saved that ISO file. I saved in D drive. I select this one. All right. Say next. This is Windows 10, so I will select Windows 10. It's Microsoft Windows product. Then next, I'll select different location to install the virtual machine. I'll go to D drive. I will create this one training and uh, i will select the location which i created training this one okay next as you see in our earlier uh, training video the required uh, what i say the required hard a disk for windows 10 64 bit that is 32 bit so i will do 32 bit all right keep this option uh, default split virtual disk into multiple files i'll customize it hardware i'll give 2 gb ram to this uh, virtual operating system to processor is good close finish Click on power on. Once you click the mouse, you will uh, not able to, you know, exit uh, from the mouse. So you have, if you want to get out, get out from this screen, you have to hold Control Alter button your mouse will be come out from the screen okay so say next install now let's see what option we will get here as i said earlier while downloading we have selected both option okay at the moment say i don't have product key now you have one two three four five six seven seven different edition what edition you want to install in this machine okay so in earlier video i described to you what windows 10 home edition have the options and features and recommended hardware so you can choose here windows professional which has most of the features available so i'm selecting this one windows 10 pro the next Well, you don't see any more different if you're selecting home edition or education edition because the feature which was given we most of the time we are not using that so not to be worried here do not select upgrade install windows and key file setting and application just do not select this one just click on custom install windows only okay we have selected 32 gb hard disk right so we are getting the same say next so here it will take some time so i'll pause the video once we are on this this finishing up i'll resume it at and we'll let you know what would be the next okay so once we were on finishing installation the system will reboot not your physical machine but here's the virtual machine okay
for me it's took around five minutes to come on this screen maybe for you if you have uh, the hdd drive it will take longer time maybe uh, at least uh, 10 to 15 minutes i have ssd okay solid state drive so that is uh, more faster compared to the hdd so you will get uh, install this uh, uh, windows 10 uh, inside your pc within 10 to 15 minutes if you have hdd it will take longer time maybe 20 minutes to get installed all right when you see getting ready that means when you see getting ready that means it's installing some driver which required to display the screen which required for internet connection which required for all all the drivers all right so installing driver in the back end and once it is completely ready we will get the screen we also need to some information uh, while uh, installation so that window is still need to be come up just wait another second one thing you have to keep in mind the machine may reboot multiple time not your physical machine the virtual machine which you see windows 10 vmware workstation player 15 i do have 15 because you know it's it was already installed on my machine the latest one is 16 which we have just downloaded right just to make sure not to confuse maybe you saying you know you have 15 and you showed when you when we are installing it showing 16 so not to be worry of all right so both are same the version is different but work are same okay as i said we need some setting in uh, this page say yes united state keyboard us yeah I just want one layout, so skip this one. Okay, now here we need to put uh, the name. I'm putting training for now. Password as you wish. Security question admin one i'm putting something okay because we are in hurry you can put right thing because you know if you forget the password that will uh, help you to you know recover your password so security question will need that to be answered correctly all right so keep in mind while uh, making security question you can select the right one and make the right one answer not now if you want cortana help you can just enable that i just skip it we are about to be done we are about to be complete this installation one more thing is while installation make sure you have backup connection uh, backup of uh, the power because you know while installing this if power cut will happen you will lost this vdi you have to install it again okay all right so installation has been completed and uh, we have the, the screen so you could see we have given 32 gb hard disk space hard disk space from our physical machine so it is used at least uh, 17 gb all right so let's see what we have installed we have chosen vinyl installation the professional edition if you go to properties you will see that all right so windows 10 professional edition all right the version of 20h2 all right 
the ram size is 2 gb which we have selected while while the installation so we are done here let's see you in next video thank you hello there welcome back and this video we are going to learn what is main difference between 32 bit os and 64 bit os so let's get started i'll go to the properties to check which operating system i do have either it is 64 bit or it is 32 bit so i could say system type is 64 bit so this machine is 64 bit so i would able to install i would able to add up to 2 tb ram in this machine all right so other thing is when you go to the c drive the c drive you would see two folders program files 86 that means 32 bit program files just a program files that means 64 bit any application which is 32 bit that will going to be installed in this folder any application which is 64 bit that will be going to install in program files so let's give you one example as you see i do have two application named 7zip 86 that means 32 bit and 7zip 64 bit that means 64 bit application when i will install this application it will going to install in uh, 32 bit directory that is this one when i will install 64 bit that will going to be installed in this directory because it is 64 bit directory all right so let's try that i'm installing 64 bit install now I'll open this folder. Now you could see 7GP is installed inside 64-bit folder. If I install 32-bit application, it will install inside 32-bit that is called 86 folder. 7-zip. All right. Now I'll minimize this one and I will open 32-bit operating system. Now we have 32-bit OS let's confirm that again it's 32 bit operating system and now i'm going to try to install 64 bit application what do you think we are able to do that <laughs> no because if you have 32 bit operating system and you are trying to install 64 bit application you won't able to install that because you have 32 bit operating system as you seen earlier we installed 64 bit as well as 32 bit application inside 64 bit application 64 bit operating system that really work all right so you would able to install 32 bit application as well as 64 bit application in 64 bit operating system but you not able to install 64 bit application inside 32 bit operating system but you would able to install 32 bit application inside 32 bit operating system not to be confused okay so i'm installing 32 bit application and it should work also you will notice in c drive we will have just one folder for program files that is also we can understand this operating system is 32 bit all right 64 bit application 64 bit operating system will have two folder one is program files and another one is program files 86 which i told you earlier whenever you installing 32 bit application that going to be installed in this directory program files okay and whenever you you are going to install 64 bit application that will install in program files in other hand if you have windows 10 operating system which is 32 bit there there would be just one folder program files and you won't be able to install 64 bit application inside 32 bit operating system you will only able to install 32 bit application not 64 bit all right so i hope uh, you have cleared this all things let's meet you in next video thank you hello there welcome back 
In this video, we are going to learn what is Outlook. Exactly what is Outlook? Outlook is an application program by Microsoft that enables users to send and receive email. But I think this is not the right answer. Exactly, Outlook does send and receive email, but there is a lot of things you Outlook also can perform. So let me open the Outlook and we'll take a look. So this is the Outlook. It's Office 2016. That means it's Outlook 2016 version. Okay. So how you can check what is the version of this Outlook? Go to the files. Go to the Office account. Here you can see Office. Microsoft Office Professional Plus 2016. All right. Even you will get the notification, the idea where the Outlook, where the MS Office is activated or not. If it is not activated, you will get here. Please enter the license information. All right. So I'll go back. So as I mentioned earlier, this is not just application which do send and receive email. There is a lot of features you can perform on the Outlook like calendar, contacts, to-do list, meetings, a lot of things. It's very easy to make beautiful email. One word I can say that we will learn a lot of things about the Outlook functionality and the features in upcoming video. So let's meet you in next video. Thank you. Hello there. In this video, we are going to talk about the features of the Outlook, not the all but important one. Suppose Eventbrite is the person who always sending you email and those emails are very important to you and you wanted to not missed up those all email which is coming from the Eventbrite. All right. So you want to you want to create a separate folder for it. So whenever email you will get from the event bride that will save into the particular folder and you will not miss those emails all right so click on that email particular email which you want to make sure which you want to monitor okay so i clicked on event bride i'll go to the rules i will click on always move message from event bride i will click on inbox and i will click on new and i'll make the folder event bright all right now the new folder is created the name event bright the always whenever event bright will send me email that will move to that particular folder all right look at so whenever the email come from the event bright that will gonna to come in particular folder not in box because you know there is bunch of emails you will get uh, within a minute every minute you will get bunch of emails so you want to monitor the particular person or particular mailbox you have to create a rule and you have to you know make a relevant name of that particular folder so you can just monitor and you will not miss the emails so this is you know this is just just i give you just single example of the features of the outlook there is a lot of feature you can do that how to fix outlook issues you get the call and you usually stating that my outlook is working very slow it's keep hanging whenever i'm sending email it's getting stuck i'm unable to send email i am i'm unable to send or receive any email so to fix this problem you have to click on file Go to account setting account setting you can go to data files or open file location now you need to do one thing is you have to close this window all right now you have to rename this folder okay complete folder or you can just rename this particular ost file because you know uh, there is issue uh, the file is corrupted this ost means offline storage file this is corrupted that's what outlook is not working properly so two things you can try one is you can uh, rename this folder like let me do that old all right close this window and open the outlook again once you open the outlook again it will retrieve the data from the Microsoft Office from the Exchange server again and it will create a new file 
for the user and it will download the all data again in ost file the offline storage file and the issue will be resolved let's go to that folder which went which we went earlier data files now you see that file is still is still there which we have made dot old file now this is another file which is now creating all right and you will see it will keep increasing till 97 mb all right so the all the data which is saved on the server that will download again and the problem will be fixed so this is how you can fix the issue if user is complaining my outlook is working slow it's keep hanging it's i'm it's getting stuck while sending emails so these all problem will be fixed when you rename this folder and the outlook will download the all files from the server again and it should be fine let's see you in next video thank you we're going to learn all about the add-ins all right the user is calling you is stating that some of the functionality the features i don't see like the skype meeting and uh, the one note so i just wanted to add some uh, emails in uh, one note and i really don't see the option available on my uh, home tab it was there earlier but somehow it's missing now also when i went to the calendar i really don't see uh, the skype meeting option is available to send a uh, meeting notification to my um, colleague so what you have to do is you have to go into file option go to the options go to add-ins and whatever add-ins are enabled or disabled you would exactly look at here so in active application add-ins so you could see the skype meeting is in in inactive state also the one which user were looking for the one note also that is disabled so you have to select this one com add-ins okay and click on go now you have to enable the add-ins which user is looking for like skype and user said one note also missing so you can check these two boxes to enable these add-ins say okay all right so add-in should be there okay i come to email back home now i could see one note uh, let me close the uh, outlook and we'll uh, open it again okay now it's uh it's enabled and uh, let let me try to add some uh, email into this one note okay event bright one note i will add to my important notes on important notes okay all right so now i'm able to open the one note and i was uh, able to add these uh, email into the one note so it work working fine all right i'll go to the meeting and i will see if uh, skype option is available or not okay so now we can able to see the new skype meeting so the issues got fixed when we enable the add-in when i went to the option add-ins go to com add-ins and we have checked these boxes hello there in this video we are going to learn how to fix the issue if user is complaining that i'm not able to send email as well as i'm not able to receive the email but somehow i am able to access network drive this is something tricky you know issue so to confirm that whether the machine is receiving internet or not to check that go to the command prompt i just press windows home key and the r button to come up this run window and just type cmd and i will try to ping the google to check whether internet is coming or not on this machine ping www.google.com so i typed www.google.com to confirm whether the internet is working or not on this machine there was four time w so that's what it's not pinging all right so i'm receiving re reply from the google.com that mean the internet is coming on this machine but somehow some setting messed up that's what the uh, outlook and uh, the internet not working uh, on the website let me open the internet explorer as well all right 
and I will try to open youtube.com. You are not connected, but I am getting reply from the Google. That means there is something missing in the setting. All right, let me open the google.com. Okay. Aha, still we are not able to open the google.com, but from the command prompt, I am getting reply that this machine have the internet connection so what we have to check else okay now go to the internet connection sorry internet options go to the connection LAN setting all right you can see use a proxy server in case proxy server is down also that mean you won't able to access internet somehow it happens sometime it happen you when you working from the home when you were working from the home and um, some somehow after uh, connecting vpn this connection was proxy server was established but somehow it was not disabled there on so you have to uncheck this box say okay and this option should be enabled all the time automatic detect setting all right say okay click on okay and now open the outlook and let's see what happened one more try we will give up give that that one is uh, okay now it's connected to microsoft exchange now i will try to open the google.com it is also working so the issue was the connection setting in the internet explorer so what i was dead is i went to the internet option i went to the connection setting i went to lan setting and i just unchecked this box once i did this i was able to access the internet also now you could see connected to microsoft exchange earlier is but not disconnected right so this is how you will fix the problem thank you very much let's see you in next video user is complaining i am not able to send any email the all all emails are getting stuck in outbox to fix this problem why it happened let me show you because you you could see 35 mb that is not allowed in company environment it should be uh, less than 15 mb or 20 mb come uh, that also depends on the company policy how much they are allowed to send the file uh, in uh, in mb all right so if you user is stating that all the files are getting stuck the, all the emails are getting stuck in outlook that mean there is something happened with the user also they are not able to delete that because you know it's a uh, in our it's a stuck on outbox and it's a trying to outlook trying to send that email so you won't able to delete that as well to delete that you have to go to send receive and you have to select this option work offline all right and now you would able to delete that that's it now you can just go back again on work offline click that back all right now user would able to send email and please learn that you are sending more than 20 mb file that is really not allowed as per the company policy the file size which have less than 50 and 15 mb you would able to send that file but not more than 15 mb so if you want to send you can just send uh, um, distribute the file in uh, 15 mb size and you can you would able to send that so this is how you have to inform the user and uh, the issue would be resolved thank you very much let's see you in next video hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn how to reset user password or how to unlock user account so let's get it started we need to open this tool active directory users and computers i'm opening it now we received the call from the user saying that i just forget the password could you please reset the password for me so we need to search username or employee id by here so i'm putting the name of user is john okay i got the john here i open it before reset the password of the user make sure we are authenticated like user the calling the person who is calling us he is the right person he is the employee of our 
organization to check that to confirm that we have to you know check something like we have to confirm users manager name we will go to the organization tab and we will ask user what is your manager name once user confirmed my manager name is matt we will authenticate yeah this is our employee and we are good to reset his password another thing we have to confirm that what is his joining date in in our organization to check that we have to go into the object tab i'm looking for that where it is object all right so we need to confirm when he, he uh, when he joined this organization we need to confirm that all right once he is confirmed this is my joining date we are good to reset the user password so i'll right click on it i'll go to the reset password i will check this option as well if account got logged out okay we will put the new password and same password we have to provide to the user all right i'm putting this new password come on Uh, password match not confirmed okay no problem my keyboard is very small all right so we have reset the user password as well as we have unlocked the user account and the password which we have entered at the moment same password we have to give to the user to log in all right so this is how it works we need to you know authenticate first before resetting the password so that's it we can give the password to the user when user will log log into the machine uh, it will machine will ask user to change the password again all right so the password which you reset that will not work again because you know for some security reason once user will log in it will ask for ask user to put the new password so that's it so how it works Let's see you in the next video. Hello there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn what is incident, what exactly incident is. When I say incident, whatever application exists in the machine and the user is saying like, you know, the application was working fine yesterday, now today I'm, I do have the issue with the application, that comes in under incident. When I say request, request is something like that user requesting for you first time. So this video is about the incident. So let's talk about the incident first. So I will come here. It is service now application, which most of the company, MNC company using at the moment. So let's see how to create a ticket. So I'll come here on this particular tab. I will click on it. I will click on new. Now we have to put the caller name. I will select from uh, from the list Abraham, Abraham and uh, subcategory would be uh, internal application service all short description. So user is stating that my outlook is not working. All right. So I will put outlook is not working. All right so now from here you have to what you have to do is you have to you know click on submit all right now you can take remote of user machine all right now you can take remote of user machine and try to fix the problem in your case now you are able to fix that problem so you have to enter these steps which you how you fix that okay so I'll copy the description as it is. All right. Now you have to go into the resolution information, resolution code, solve permanently. All right. Reset user outlook profile. So you user mentioned that he, he is not able to access the outlook. You took the remote of user machine and you reset the user outlook profile and the outlook was start working all right so issue got resolved so now you have to do is you have to 
click on dissolve all right now you've got another call so you just click on new again and you have to enter the color name i'll select from the list i'll pick up someone else from here alina this time now this is not an inquiry or help okay now this is uh, something uh, user is stating that my machine is working very slow so now you just come to this category and just go to drop down and select software all right subcategory should be operating system because user having issue with the operating system service i'll leave it blank configuration item should be ms windows microsoft windows and short description short description we have to mention windows 10 or 7 windows 10 is working slow i'll copy the same inside description column all right so now we have to took the remote off user machine and we need to perform some initial troubleshooting to fix the problem mostly happen if machine is working slow there could be low space in the c drive maybe there is bunch of temporary files stored in the user folder so we have to run the disk cleanup and try to fix the problem the slowness problem okay if a still issue got not resolved we have to send this ticket to the l2 support level team because what happened maybe there could be issue with the bad sector in the hard drive there could be an issue in the ram so that service desk team will not gonna take care of it all right so l2 need to be identify the right issue exact issue and need to perform the troubleshooting all right so we will we will not go we we are not going to close this ticket resolve this ticket because the issue is not resolved we have did did the troubleshooting but the issue is not at resolve all right so we are moving this ticket to l2 level support to take a look so assignment group desktop support l2 all right we have mentioned the description windows 10 working slow what we have performed we have to also mention in the description we have ran the desk cleanup ran chk dsk command ran sfc scan now so these are the you know uh, the very initial uh, things we have to perform if user is stating that that there is a slowness issue on the machine so we we what we have done so far on the machine we run the disk cleanup to like disk cleanup let me open disk cleanup all right so we <clears throat> did the disk cleanup we are clear all the things whatever we have found in this uh, we have checked all the boxes and we have clean up the files from temporary files to make machine faster we went to the command prompt sorry <clears throat> we went to the command prompt and we run the command c chk dsk all right access denied we have to run this command prompt as administrator okay we run the command chk dsk again so it will verify the you know hard disk bad sector and if something found you found you have to mention in the ticket and send back to the desktop l2 support we have we have ran this also command run sfc scan now but still user is stating that the issue got not resolved okay so we need to assign this ticket to l2 support level team to take a look contact type you can select email or if user is stating that you know somebody needs to be called me over the phone you have to select phone or uh, you can um, most of the time we have select email because you know everybody can check the emails so click on submit we are now we are not going to resolve this ticket because the issue got not resolved it okay so we gonna submit it hello there welcome back in this video i will talk about what is request and how it works i clicked on this service catalog request tab now i will click on new let's see what other option we have for request so document production service 
office peripherals mobile desktop software hardware in this particular request i will talk about the software request all right so i'll click on software user is called you and is stating that i need adobe reader okay so click on software now this is the adobe acrobat 9 standard all right there is bunch of application which is uh, available uh, inside software request but in this particular video i will talk this uh, acrobat example all right i'll click on adobe acrobat i will click on order now that's it you can open this one and requested for it took my name i need to select the person who need this application and if i will click on update so now it went to the waiting for approval so once users manager will approve this uh, uh, request user will get the license of the adobe acrobat that's it this is very simple so once you go into the service catalog you will get this kind of stuff on the screen and you can ask what you exactly user needed all right if user is stating that i need the new laptop you have to select hardware which laptop user is requesting for it's apple or it's normal windows all right user is saying that i do have the another project where i need to work on the apple stuff you have to select apple and say or no all right i'll put here the requested for the person name who looking for this laptop all right update so we are good to go all right you can just give this number to the user and uh, ask user to you know check with uh, your manager and uh, take the approval so once it is approved it will go to the particular team the concern team and they will purchase the mac pro for you and they will deliver to your home so that's it we are good to go and uh, the ticket will close by the person who provided the laptop okay the team who provided the laptop to the user so there is no need to send uh, this ticket this request to anywhere it will goes to automatic with the concern team uh, who would be you know take care of this uh, uh, purchasing purchasing stuff so we are good let's see you in next video thank you hi there welcome back in this video we are going to see if user is calling service desk and uh, asking to raise request for a new laptop how we are going to be handle this call so let's get started hello hello thank you for contacting service desk it how may i help you uh, hi this is nihal uh, i need the new laptop for uh, you know to work in weekend from home because uh, I just do have the desktop, but uh, you know I not able to carry this uh, a big, uh, big desktop at my home. So I just need the laptop. And the manager said, "Call help desk and uh, uh, raise a request for uh, a new laptop." So that's what I'm calling. Yeah, no problem. So will you please help me with your employee ID? It's uh, five five six seven eight. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the security reasons, I just need to know your manager name. Will you please help me with your manager name? Uh, it's a Sam Smith. Yeah, thank you. So let me create a request for you. Uh, uh, may I know which laptop specifically you need? Uh, I need a Apple laptop because you know there is software development work which uh, I need to work uh, in weekend and that requires the Apple uh, Apple book yeah well we do have two apple laptops so one is a macbook pro uh, which is 13 inches laptop and another is uh, apple macbook pro which is 15 inch display uh, module uh, i need the 15 inch model display because you know i need to develop some uh, graphics uh, website and that's what i just need big screen not the 13 so 15 uh, is uh, good for me okay thank you so much for the information i just raise a request on behalf of your uh, 
laptop requirements so a request number has been generated by me and you will receive a email notification with this request number so what will happen is uh, this request number will be forwarded to your manager after the approval from your manager the respective uh, hardware team will connect you soon and they will uh, provide a laptop to you okay so uh, do you know how much time it will take to get delivered this laptop at my home any idea yeah as far as i concern um it all it de- first of all it depends on your manager approval after the approval from your manager uh, this uh, hardware uh, team will help you within 3 days 3 working days all right that's fine for me okay so that's all thank you very much for raising a request uh, for me thank you thank you for contacting service desk it nihal and have a nice day yeah you too bye Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn if user is calling you and stating that my outlook is not working i am not able to send email and also i am not able to receive the email also i am not able to access any website like the google.com or any other website a external or internal website so that's what i'm calling that's what user is calling the technician to get help on it so let's get it started hello Hello thank you for contacting service desk IT how may i help you um hi myself nihal singh uh, i just need help uh, to fix my internet connectivity issue i am not able to receive email even i am not able to send email even the google.com any other website external internet nothing is working for me so i am not sure it was working yesterday when i was in office when i went to the home and come back morning this morning and now i'm not able to access my uh, outlook and the internet from the morning i'm in the office now okay no problem so will you please allow me a moment yeah sure no problem so first of all i'm going to create a incident ticket for you okay. so, uh, and after that i will try, i will proceed with the session of, uh, of your machine I'm not sure if you would be able to connect my PC because the internet is not working on my machine. No, I will be able to connect uh, this uh, uh, your machine because uh, internet is working, but uh, there is a proxy issue is going on on your machine. So uh, allow me a moment. Please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Take your time, no problem. uh you need my machine name to connect my pc yes i need your machine name so please give me your machine name okay i know how to get the machine name okay so you can also check it through system information there is a option if you will go to yeah, search i know I that how to get the I... computer name so it's uh, computer name is uh, uh w i n 801 okay nice so you will receive a pop up to allow me so please click on yes so that i can connect with your machine remotely i just allowed you to connect my machine now i am able to see your screen okay. and uh, i'm going to elevate your machine through a request control please click on yes so that i can connect uh, and i can have a control on your machine properly all right i just allowed you to control my pc so let me show what is happening so you can see now this showing me disconnected and i will open the google and uh, i will try to open the google.com sorry nothing is working i got it so let me uh, try to fix this issue i know how to fix it okay so it's a known issue for everybody uh, yeah it it happens it occurs uh, when normally uh, users uh, uh, logging off their machine without disconnecting vpn so please make sure from the next time before logging off the machine after exi- after exiting uh, you need to disconnect vpn manually so that uh, is the okay 
uh, without this uh, if uh, if you are not get, going to disconnect your vpn your proxy connection is still established okay. and that is getting the same issue yeah i think you are right because uh, uh, at the night yesterday i was not disconnected the vpn i just directly shut down my pc might be that caused the problem not sure yeah so allow me a moment please okay Uh, i will lost my favorites uh, no not no you will not uh, lost your favorites because i just reset your browser okay no problem thank you want me to try again yeah please close the application now and uh, please try once again Oh, it's working. It seems to be working. Let me try to open the Google as well. Okay, one moment. Yeah. You can also try to access your MS Office applications just like Apple. Okay. Okay. Still okay. all right so it shows now connected to microsoft exchange so i think i'm good to go all set now yeah thank you very much for fixing this issue thank you yeah thank you for contacting service desk it nihal and uh, uh, apart from this uh, is there anything else that i can help you with uh, no that's all i just need support and in so you just fix the issue so i'm all set thank you very much so i already create a incident a ticket in reference to this issue and you will receive a email notification with the result with the resolution i'm going to resolve it thank you yeah have no, a nice day yeah you too so the guys the issue got resolved what uh, the technician has done is he reset my um what i say the internet setting and after that i i am able to access uh my google.com the internal external website and also i'm able to access the outlook so technician went to advanced tab and clicked on restore advanced setting and clicked on reset and after that the issue got re resolved now technician as you see on the screen on the screen technician is going to close this ticket because he has fixed that issue So that's it in this video let's see you in next video thank you Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn if a user is calling you and is stating that my ms office is not working it's not opening when i'm opening it it's giving me some some kind of the what i say the installation window and i'm not sure what to do with it so let's uh, see it how the uh, technical person can fix this issue so let's get it started hello hello thank you for contacting service desk it how may i help you uh hi my name is nihal singh uh, when i am trying to open the ms office uh, you know it's uh, showing like installation i'm i'm not very sure what to do with uh, this uh, window and just i'm stuck completely stuck i'm not able to work in excel file outlook file so whatever application i'm opening for ms office it's not working okay so could you please help me for that yeah sure uh, i can help you with this uh, i need to uh, take the session of your machine so would you please allow me a moment yeah sure no problem yeah so just guy for your confirmation uh, this window technical support desktop this is uh, uh, a tech guy desktop and this is user machine all right so not to be confused so 
at the moment the technician is creating a ticket for me uh, to work on my issue okay nihal i just need to check the session as i have mentioned so will you please help me with your machine name uh machine name i'm not sure how to get that machine name okay so you can do one thing uh you can go to your system information there is a option if you will go to your search icon there is the option system information so yes. when you will open it mm -hmm. you will be able to see your machine name all right i am opening it uh yeah system name is uh, uh w i n 801 okay yeah sure thank you so much i just sent a request to you uh, so that i can take the session yeah i, I got the message for uh, allow uh, allow you know what it is would you like to allow administrator to connect to your computer so should i click on yes Yes, please click on yes. Okay. Um, my screen got black completely. Do you do you able to see my screen? Yes, I can see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I show you what error I'm getting when opening uh, the Excel file? If uh, you are able to see my screen. Yeah, sure. Please show me. Okay, so this is the Excel file which I'm trying to open, and this is the window which I'm getting all the time. Even I'm canceling it and opening it again, and the the messages come up on the screen again and again. Even uh, this is for all the MS Office application, like when I'm trying to open the Word file as well, and the error message is same. So not not sure what to do with it. Okay. So. Yeah. Sure, no. let me let me try to fix this issue okay uh are you able to control my machine uh, yeah so i'm going to send a request control to your machine please click on yes okay. yeah i just allow you to control my pc Thank you so much. Uh, let me resolve your issue. All right. Uh, how much time it will take to fix this problem? Normally, it takes five to ten minutes. So, uh, no need to worry. Uh, we'll try to fix this as soon as possible. Okay. uh will i be lost my uh, word file excel file which i do have after repair or no. reinstall you will not re lost anything because i am just trying to repair your ms office rather than to remove it okay so hardly this repairing process takes normally 4 to 5 minutes so don't worry okay that's fine for me i will put your call in on hold okay yeah sure thank you so much so guys repairing is uh, in process and uh, as a tech technical guy said it takes around 5 minutes so actually it takes around 5 to 10 minutes so let's see and yes of course uh, if we repair or reinstall the ms office we will not loss any file that the file would be remain same there is no loss so after reinstallation or repair the ms office uh, the files would be not affect Uh, hello i'm back yeah hello yeah so thank you for your patience that uh, uh, you are on the call with us
so it keeps on uh, repairing and will be repaired uh, very soon okay do you know why it happened is there any particular reason it's uh, it was uh, failed to open there is any way we can check it or normally it happen because you know yesterday suddenly my machine got shut down multiple time because of the power cut issue maybe that could be the reason i'm not sure but i'm just uh, telling you the maybe it could be the reason to uh, have uh, occurring this issue so not sure so this this error normally uh, happen with um, many employees uh, who are in multiple organizations but uh, normally it is due to the file issue um, some files are maybe corrupt or some files are not compatible in the office uh, uh, office packet package so due to those files uh, this issue came and after repairing this process uh, those files has been removed completely okay okay thank you for the information yeah no problem uh it looks it is completed yeah yeah it is completed now so now you can try to now uh, i'm going to reboot your machine yeah. after that you you will be able to access all the applications of ms office normally okay no problem yeah it's rebooting restarting i have the screen yeah thank you and uh, uh then you will be able to access your excel ms office files outlook also so this issue is normally happen very with very uh, very much employees so so you will receive a notification through email in reference to this ticket and uh, uh i just need to know that uh, please let me know if you are able to access the files or not yeah i'm just uh, log in to my ma machine and uh, let me i'll confirm you shortly okay okay perfect the outlook is opening now uh, i'm trying to configure my email so let's see if uh, also i'm able to get into my outlook okay yeah sure please check Okay I'm good to go I can able to access my outlook thank you for your help thank you for contacting service desk IT Nihal and uh, I'm going to close this ticket and you will receive a email notification for that and anything else uh, that I can help you with no that's all thank you very much okay thank you for contacting us have a nice day yeah you too so the problem is fixed and now the technician has also uh, resolved this uh, uh, ticket because he has able to resolve the issue some cases if issue got not not resolved they they can able to move this ticket to l2 support in that case so that's it in this video let's see you in next video thank you Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to see if user is calling you and is stating that my machine is working very slow and it was working fine yesterday but today when i reboot the machine and suddenly started working very slow and uh, user need help on it so let's get started hello 
Hi, thank you for contacting Service Desk IT. How may I help you? Uh, hi, dear. My name is Nihal Singh and uh, I need your help to fix my slowness issue. It's working very slowly. I'm not able to perform my daily work. It's hampering my work and I need the solution urgently on it because I have to be deliver some urgent work. So could you please help me on it? Yeah, sure. So I need to check uh, your employee ID. Uh, so allow me a moment. What is your employee ID? Please may I know? It's uh, 55678. Yeah, thank you so much for your help. Um, I need to create an incident ticket for you so that uh, uh, you can receive an email notification. Will you please allow me a moment? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. So Nihal, I just created a ticket for you. So uh, I need to connect uh, your machine uh, from my desktop remotely. So will you please allow me with your machine name? Okay. Uh, it's uh, WIN801. Thank you so much for your help. So please allow, uh, click on allow so that I can see your machine. Yeah, I clicked on yes. Okay, I'm going to send a request controls uh, pop up on your machine. Please click on uh, yes. Yeah, I granted your permission. Thank you so much, Nihal. So now uh, I'm going to check the bad sector if any exists in your drive. So what is going to be happen? If there will be any bad sector in your hard drive, then your your complete hard drive will need to be replaced. In case if the bad sector will be zero then I will repair your operating system accordingly. Uh, listen, when you say I need to replace the hard drive, that you mean I will lost all the data which I do have in my C or D drive? No, you will not uh, lost any data. So okay. uh, it depends. And secondly, uh, please let me check. Then I will let you know. Okay. Okay. So I'm just checking if there is any bad sector in your drive. Um, do you know how much time it will take, how much time it will consume? Because as I mentioned earlier, I need to deliver some important work and I need to, you know, um, get ready this PC as soon as you can uh, fix it. So any any idea how much time it will take? Yeah, so normally it takes 30 minutes to one hour. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send an email to you. So after this process will keep on updating. So make sure this window should be open. So after the completion of this process, uh, you can reply. If, if your issue has been resolved, you can reply on the same email that I will, I'm going to send you now. Okay, so uh, when this window is open, would I would I able to perform other work or just I need to wait till this finishes off? No, so you can you can also work with other tabs also, um, but make sure this tab should not be closed. Okay, I I got you. Yeah. So uh, you can see here the bad sector option is zero kilobytes in your drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to repair your operating system completely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So allow me a second.
So this process is initiated by me. You can see the verification is running and okay. it has been completed 3%, 4%. Okay. So now I'm going to send an email to you. Okay, so you want me to stay on the call or you are you are done with your work? Yeah, so I'm done with I'm done with my work and uh, you can reply on the mail that I'm going to send you after the completion of this process. So can I close your uh, remote connection because there is some, you know. Oh, yeah. You can close it. Thank you. Okay. So is I'll wait, I will let you know. Done? I will let you know once it is on 100% when it is done. And uh, please, uh, I'll, 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 I will also let you know whether the problem is resolved or not. So accordingly, you can just get back to me to uh, support me further on it. Okay. Yeah. So after your answer, I will get back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nihar, for contacting Service Desk IT. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn how to reset the password. This is very common issue which we get on daily basis. So just I'm going to call back the survey desk guy to uh, take the help from uh, resetting my password. All right. Hello. Yeah, thank you for contacting service desk IT. How may I help you? Uh, hi, my name is Nihal Singh. Uh, you know, yesterday I reset the password, but somehow I just I forget it again and just wanted to reset my password again. So could you please help me for that? Yeah, sure. Can you please help me with your name? Nihal Singh. Okay. What, uh, give me a second. Yeah. Okay. Nihal, can you please uh, help me with your employee ID? Uh, it's five five six seven eight. Okay, okay. Uh, can you please help me with the manager name? Sam Smith. Okay, thank you so much for your help. Allow me a moment. Let me create. Uh, let me reset your password. All right. Thank you. Uh, Nihal, I just reset your password. Would you please try to log in now? And uh, should I use my previous password, which I reset oh, no, yesterday? No. Yeah, so your new password is welcome at 123. And W is in caps. All right. Oh, okay. Perfect. I'm uh, able to log into my PC. So I'm all set. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, thank you, Nihar. And uh, uh, you will receive a notification through email. And I just create an incident on behalf of this password reset request. Okay. So any, anything else apart from this that I can help you? With? No, that's all. Thank you very much for it. Yeah. Thank you so much for contacting Service Desk IT, Nihal. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Bye for now. So guys, this is how the call will happen. You will get the call from the user and they will uh, tell you reset the password and you have to create a new ticket. You have to fill out the information before uh, resetting the password. You have to, you know, ask user for uh, some uh, security question to verify either this user is a uh, uh, employee of this company or not so that actually needed and that is very uh, first step we have to make sure the caller who calling us he is part of a company he is the uh, employee of the organization and after the 
authentication we can reset the password we can create a ticket for it and we will uh, resolve that ticket like you can see on the screen so that's all let's see you in next video hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn suppose user is calling you and asking you to you know raise a request behalf of you to get this of software installed on your machine so how it will happen so let's get it started hello thank hi. you for contacting service desk id how may i help you uh, hi, my name is Nihal Singh. I just need uh, a software, Snagit. It, it is called Snagit and I just wanted to install this application in my machine. So I just need help on it. Yeah, sure. Will you please help me with your employee ID? It's uh, 55678. Uh, yeah, thank you. And may I know your manager name, please? Sam Smith. Yeah, thank you so much for the information. So, Nihal, I'm going to uh, raise a request on behalf of your software requirement. So, uh, you need to snag it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, allow it. me. Allow me a moment. Yeah. Uh, I need a version eleven. So, not sure if it is available with you. Yeah, it is version 11 that that I have requested for you. Okay, thank you. So please note down the request number. Your request number is R E Q. Okay. R for Romeo, E for Echo, Q for Quest. Okay. Zero zero one zero 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 eight. So or you will also receive this request number on your email address. Okay. And after this request will be forwarded to your manager. Okay. And after the approval from your manager, this request will be forwarded to the respective team, and that respective team will help you with this software. Yeah. Is there anything else I can help you with? I uh, just need to know one thing. Uh, uh, when should this application will install my machine? How much time it will take? This is just I just wanted to know if there is any ETA for this uh, application installation on my machine. Yeah, so as far as I concern, uh, after the manager, after your manager approval, it will directly forward to the respective uh, team uh, who is handling their software requests. And after that, immediately in four days, this software will be installed on your machine. Uh, all right, thank you. This is what I just wanted to need, uh, know about it. So that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Yeah, thank you for contacting Service Desk IT Nihal and have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Hi there. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to handle software requests. So I'm going to ring the IT guy. Okay. Hello. Thank you for contacting Service Desk IT. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Nihal Singh and uh, I wanted to request some application if you could uh, help me for that. Yeah, sure. Uh, will you please help me with your employee ID? It's 55768. Okay. Uh, please help me with your manager name also. Sam Smith. Um, okay. But this application I need for myself, not for my manager. Yeah, I got it. But for the security perspective, we need such information. Uh, all right. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. So allow me a moment so that I can order a, a software for you. Okay. Uh, may I know which software you want? Microsoft Visio Professional. I need that. Okay. I got it. So are you going to install this application in my PC now? No, not now. Uh, I just uh, create an order for you in reference to this application. Okay. And a request number has been generated by this application. Okay. So please note down the request number and already you will receive this uh, request number through email also. Okay, so the just request send me email because, uh, you know, there is nothing I can just note it down. I just out, outside of company and I'm calling from my phone. So... The notepad okay. is not handy, so you can just send me email so I can check that later on. 
So this request number will be sent to your email ID. It's an automated generated email okay. process, and uh, after the confirmation and approval from your manager, this request will be forwarded to the respective team, and they will help you with the uh, further proceedings. Okay. Any estimated time to get this piece, this uh, software installed in my machine? Any time? Any any? I mean, time? Any? Yeah. One oh. day, two day, three day. How much time it takes? so the maximum time process has been according to the sla is 3 working days so after the approval from your manager the respective team will proceed within 3 working days all right thank you i got you yeah thank you for contacting us is there anything else that i can help you with no that's all thank you yeah have a nice day bye yeah you too Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to see how to handle password reset call it's a very common issue which we get on daily basis and it's a very simple one where we can reset the password for the user now i'm going to ring the it support guy hello hello thank you for contacting service desk it how may i help you Uh, hi my name is nihal singh and uh, i just wanted you to reset my password because i am not able to log into my machine yeah sure allow me a moment yep nihal will you please help me with your employee id it's 55678 yeah i just want to know your manager name also it's uh, smith sam smith yeah sure so let me reset your password and allow me a moment please yeah sure Uh, now you can try to log in with the new password that is welcome at one two three. So in which W is in caps? Please let me know if it is working for you. Okay, I'm trying. You said W is in caps, right? Yeah, sure. Yes, the W is in caps. Okay. Ah, uh, perfect. I can able to log into my machine. Thank you for your help. Yeah, thank you for contacting uh, service desk. And I'm just uh, creating a ticket for you, and you will get an email notification for that. So I'm going to close it permanently. Is there anything else if they, I, I can help you with? No, that's all I have. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, thank you for contacting uh, service desk IT. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. so this is how it happened the conversation between the bitpin user and the technical guy so he will reset your password he will create a ticket behalf of you and he will resolve that ticket and you will be get notified the user will be get notified while via the email that issue got resolved the you know, password issue got resolved so this is how it happened that's it let's see you in next video thank you Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to see how to handle internet issues so i'm going to ring the technical person and let's see how to handle this case hello thank you for contacting service desk it how may i help you hi my name is nihal and uh, i'm facing issue with the internet connectivity i'm not able to access the internet as well as the outlook both are not working Okay, from how much time you are facing this issue? Ah, uh, I could say since morning when I came to the office, it 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 is stop working. It was working yesterday fine when I was in home. Yeah. 
Okay. Are you the only one who is facing the same issue? Yeah. Uh, apart from you, other employees are also facing this issue. No, I guess I'm the one only facing this issue because others are others are able to access the internet uh, without any issue. So I just one who have the issue with the internet. Okay. I need to take the session of your machine. Uh, please provide your machine name so okay. that I can connect. Okay. My machine name would be WIN801. I sent you a request to connect the session. Okay. I approved. Okay. Please click on request control. Approved. Thank you. Uh, allow me a moment. Um, Please, can you show what exactly the error message you are yeah, having? Yeah, sure. Let me show you the error message. So when I'm opening this website, uh, the skillcareerhub.com, it shows this site cannot be uh, reached. But this is not just a one side. Uh, every side of, I'm opening having the same message on the screen. Even uh, the Outlook is not connected to the Microsoft Exchange. It shows disconnected. So these two issues I do have. Okay. Um, let me check. Okay. Um, I want you to check once again if is it working or not. Okay, let me try. Wow, it seems like internet is working. Let me try to open the Outlook and let's see if uh, it is also working. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm good. It's connected to Microsoft Exchange, so I would be able to receive the emails, new emails. So thanks, buddy. I'm good now. Thank you. Is there anything else that I can help you with? No, that's all. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Bye. Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to handle the hardware request. When I say hardware request, it could be anything like user is requesting for the laptop, user is requesting for the iPhone, the Android phone, whatever, the printer, and uh, we have to call, uh, user have to call service desk to raise a request for this particular hardware. So I'm going to ring the IT guy now. Hello. Yeah, thank you for contacting Service Desk IT. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Nihal Singh and uh, I need the new laptop to work from home in weekend because I just do have the, you know, weekend work and I could not carry my heavy desktop from uh, office to my home. So I just need the laptop. Yeah, sure. So will you please help me with your employee ID? It's five five six seven eight. And may I know your manager name? Sam Smith. Okay. Uh, allow me a moment. Let me create a request for you. Yeah, sure. No problem. Well, I'm looking for Apple laptop. Yeah. So uh, we do have two modules of MacBook Pro. Okay. Uh, in which one, one is MacBook Pro 13 inches module and another one is MacBook Pro 15 inches display module. So would uh, which one would you like to have? The one which you mentioned 15 inch uh, that I needed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got it. Let me order it. Uh, 
so please note down the request number okay. i just uh, create a request on behalf of this order okay. so request number is r e q 0010010 and uh, this request will be forwarded to your manager and after the approval from your manager this request will be forwarded to the respective team who is handling the uh, laptop uh, management and they will help you with this uh, in three working days all right i got you so thank you for your help, help. so you you said uh, i'll get this laptop within three days right yes after the approval from your manager okay i got you thank you very much for creating a request for me thanks buddy yeah is there anything else that i can help you with no that's all i need thanks have a nice day bye yeah you too That's it guy let's see you next video Hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn one of simple issue which mostly we get on daily basis where user called you and is stating that i am not able to access my virtual machine so user logged in so this is user logged in with the citrix url and user is not able to launch trading desktop it is published trading desktop all right so user clicked on trading desktop and it says cannot start desktop trading desktop all right so you have to check which trading desktop is assigned to the user now we log in to the director all right so i already logged in logged in with my id and i will search the machine name which is assigned to the user which is citrix svr01 all right now after see i could see the maintenance mode is on on the machine that's what user is getting that error message is not able to connect why this happening is when user click multiple time on the citrix icon the virtual machine icon it moved to the maintenance mode so we have to remove this maintenance mode all right and we need we need to ask user to give a try again to access the trading desktop now there is no error message and it is ready to open so click on open now user is able to access the trading desktop the citrix trading desktop which is published that's it thank you hi there welcome back in this video we are going to take one simple example where user called you and is stating that i am not able to access my vdi please help me to fix the issue so this is the vdi name which is given by the user and user is trying remote desktop connection to access this vdi okay so i put it over here user is clicking on connect and it just loading nothing is happening to fix this problem you need to log in into the vmware vSphere you will get the id of this okay so i'm logging with my id let's say what is the error message okay so remote desktop cannot connect to the remote computer all right so let's see what happening all right so we have the vdi name provided by the user this one Oh, so machine is powered off that's what user not able to log in into the vdi of course user will not have any tool to power on the machine all right so maybe something went wrong and the machine goes power off so you have to do you do is you have to click on power on all right when you click on this black screen another window will come up web console and you will see the status of the VDI, whether it is getting turned on or not. Okay. Even though you will get the IP address over here, once you confirm, you will have the IP address of the VDI. You, you may ask user to give a try again to access the VDI. So it's loading, loading. so maybe there is another scenario where you don't the machine is powered on but there is no ip address assigned to the vdi okay 
in that case also you have to reboot the machine okay so if you go to the action and go to the power you need to click on restart since the vdi is powered on you don't don't see the screen other thing you can click on reset so machine will reboot okay so now this vdi got the ip address now you may ask user to give a try again to access the vdi so let's say connect all right username is steve let's put the password click on ok yep all right so now user is able to log in so this is how it works thank you very much and let's see you in next video thank you hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn what is citrix so citrix is the application in citrix there are two parts one is virtual apps and one is virtual desktop which used to publish application and virtual machine from a hypervisor when i say hypervisor it could be azure hypervisor aws hypervisor citrix zen server hypervisor or vmware hypervisor a published vm application means every user gets a unique and shared virtual machine and applications why i bring up bring it up this lesson into the uh, service days because we have little bit work on this uh, citrix and the vmware so that we are going to learn in very next part thank you hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn what is vmware so vmware is the application which used to virtualized server operating system client operating system and of course network so what is the use of vmware in service desk analyst job so there is very simple job in vmware uh, let's say user is calling you and stating that i'm not able to access one of vm the virtual machine so what you have to do is you have to log in into the vmware console you will have the access on it and just reboot the virtual machine and once you reboot the machine and you will see the virtual machine got the ip address you you need to inform user um, just try to access it now and the issue will resolve so this kind of stuff you have to perform in vmware as well as in citrix so that we are going to learn practically okay so let's see you next video thank you
Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see what is DSCP server, what is the use of it. So, DSCP server called as Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. DSCP server automatic assign IP address to network devices. Network devices means your computer, your mobile device, the printer device, whatever device which required the IP address, DSCP server will provide the IP address for them. All right, so let's take a look how it works. So when you power on your machine, your computer, it discover for the DSCP server, right? Discover. So it look for this DSCP server. So DSCP server, it is in listening mode all the time, all right? So once DSCP server will offer the IP address to your computer, your computer will tell, okay, give me this IP address. So it will send request packet to the DSCP server. DSCP server will send acknowledgement to the DSCP client. DSCP clients mean your computer. Okay, take this IP address. All right. So this is how it happens, how your machine get the IP address. So that's it. Let's see you next video. Hi there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn internet versus intranet. So internet is a wide network of computers that is available to all of us. That means every can able to access internet website. Whereas intranet is a network of computers designed to access only in company premises. That means private website will not able to access in internet. All right. We will not able to access intranet website in a public network. All right. Internet is a public network and intranet is a private network. Let's look at diagram. So internet, it is open for all of us. Public can able to access. I mean, every can able to access the internet website. Extranet only can able through suppliers, partners, customers. Customer also you can say a vendor, all right. So in this scenario, Company will provide access to in extra net. Company will provide access to suppliers, partners, to and customer because they do have to fill up some uh, information in the website. So they also able able to access uh, the extra net. All right, intranet. So intranet will only able to access inside a company. Most of the time, you will only able to see. Um, internet and intranet not extranet so that's fine all right so if interviewer will ask you what is internet and what is intranet so intranet website will only able to access inside company premises and over the vpn all right whereas internet website we can able to access from anywhere all right so that is not necessary you have to be sit inside the company that is not necessary for internet website for internet you must have vpn if you are outside of the company or else you need to be connect your lan network to access internet website all right so that's it let's see you next video hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn static ip versus a dynamic ip address so static IP, a fixed IP address assigned to each computer on a network. I mentioned each computer, but it should be only uh, server or router. So I, static IP address will only assign to the server or router. All right. The static IP address will not assign to your machine. Right. So a fixed IP address assigned to a server or router on a network which means it stays the same over time, all right? Dynamic IP address, which means the address can be changed over time after lease period over. Let's take a look how it looks like, okay? So if your machine, if you go to the network properties and if you can see, use the following IP address, this check box, that means your machine have assigned a static IP address which I mentioned earlier, it should be a server, all right? Most of the time, I mean, I can say 90 99% time, your machine will have the dynamic IP address. Right? So the window, which you can see here, 
this is a dynamic IP address so obtain an IP address automatic all right so this is called dynamic IP address all right so this is my machine it's a Windows 10 machine if I go to the uh, network property and CPA it is a shortcut command to open the network properties if I open this go to details what you can see is go to properties I will click on this one all right opt in an IP address automatic that means this machine is assigned dynamic IP address let's see if I want to assign static IP address to this particular machine why we assigning a static IP address some um, if uh, you are a developer I mean if you are a website developer and something like that uh, you always need a single IP address okay to uh, make sure uh, to perform your given activity so when you select this one you can give this you can give it here the manual IP address whatever you have and just say okay all right so once you click on okay the static IP address will assign to you you would able to access your machine through IP address and the host name. All right. So that's it. Let's see your next video. Hi there. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn what is DNS server, domain name system. It is responsible to convert host name into the IP address and from the IP address to the host name. Let's take the example when you type something on the browser that will goes to the local dns server if local dns server does not find anything suitable with your uh, whatever you typed on the web browser that will goes to the again web server and that will display the content on the web browser so that's it it's a simple one of course in service desk you really don't have to work on dns server this kind of stuff but of course you should have the knowledge that's what is part of this service desk analyst uh, course thanks let's see you next video hi there welcome back in this complete section we are going to talk about the ip addresses so let's get it started so what is ip address when somebody asks you what is our ip address so correct answer would be IP address is a unique address that identifies a device on the internet or local network local network when it is mentioned lo local network it is uh, inside company premises each and every device will have IP address if your machine doesn't have IP address you will not able to access the internet or intranet internet is the public place where you can access the internet intranet inside the company inside the company premises each and every device which are available over internet or intranet will must have ip address communication will not happen without ip address that means if your machine doesn't have the ip address if your phone doesn't have the ip address you will not communicate over internet you will not able to access internet Windows command to check IP address of machine. So here is the command where you can type is IP config. Once you enter it, you will get the IP address of your machine. IP config slash all is the command where you will get more details. Let me give you an example. So I have this machine. I have a PMD. Let me know the command prompt called dos command prompt i will type ip config and simply i will get the ip address of the my machine let's see i if i need more details okay you can type ip config same and slash all now you have much details on your network adapter what is the dns name what is the ip6 address what is subnet what is dns uh, lease optional lease expires time everything you would able to see when you put the command IP config slash all Also, you will get all the network adapter details if you have additional network install Let's see if you connect it to VPN you will get two IP address. Let's see you have 
a different uh, network adapter you will get all the information on this black window on the command dos command prompt mode all right a pipa address 169.254.00 to 169.254.255.255 what is this okay so a pipa address when this a pipa address will get assigned to your machine let's see um, there is no dscp server available in your network maybe it is temporary dawn or maybe uh, the dscp server have some problem when i say dscp server it could be your router home router in company there would be windows server 2016 19 12 whatever it is and there dscp rule was installed okay so if machine will not get any address it will get assigned automatic apipa address all right which start from here all right let's see you in next video hi there welcome back in this video we are going to learn about ip classes ip address classes in class a we will have the ip range from 1.0.0.1 to 126.255.255.254 in one single network we will able to assign 16 million host host mean a computer all right computer laptop mobile edc whatever it is it should be a network device that's all in class v we will have the ip range from 128.1.0.1 to 191.255.255.254 dot 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 in one single network we can assign 64000 host all right means computer maybe you are saying where the 127 ip address so 127 ip address will be a loopback address which we use to check the uh, network card connectivity all right if you're not getting reply from 127.0.01 that means your machine network controller has some problem let me give you an example ping all right one two seven what this called loopback address right one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one all right i'm getting reply that mean my ecpi control working class c ip address range 192.0.1.12 dot zero dot one dot one two three dot two five five dot two five four dot five four in one single network you will have you will able to assign 254 host that means computer right or you can say network devices in class day this ip range used in multicast class c address will use in rmd that's it let's see you next video okay so earlier i was told 127.0.0.1 Two five four local loopback address is used to let a system send a message to itself to make sure that TCP IP installed correctly on the machine. That means, as I mentioned earlier, if you're not getting reply when you're typing one two seven dot zero dot zero one, getting timeout. That means something bad with your network controller. TCP IP not installed correctly on. The machine. Have to install it again. That's it. Let's see you next. next.
Hi there, in this video I will talk about difference between local, local low roaming and demanded profile. What it is? What is the use of it? So let's see it. Local user profile is created the first time that the user logs on the computer. The profile is stored on the computer's local hard disk. What that means is when you log into your machine using local ID password, what that means is whatever you saved on your desktop that will be remain same on the same machine on the same drive if you log into another machine those files would be not there on the desktop so again a local user profile is created the first time that user logs on to a computer the profile is stored on the computer local hard drive okay so the everything whatever you saved on the desktop whatever you have make the favorites you have make the changes whatever setting windows uh, os level setting or uh, the uh, application level setting everything will be stored on the local machine okay it will not saved on the centralized machine okay centralized hard drive so changes made to the local user profile are specific to the user okay so whatever you have set up on the single machine that will be remain same on the same machine only okay when you log into another machine or another machine you have to set up everything again okay so let's look at a roaming profile a roaming profile is stored on the central server which can be accessed from all the domain computers and this allows you to have the same environment setting on every machine to which you log on your roaming profile is copied to a machine when you log on and is synchronized back to the server when you log off so whatever setting you have on your machine right now i'm talking about the roaming profile the same setting you will get when you log into another machine on the same network okay when you log off the machine whatever you have made the changes again those will be synchronized centrally okay and once you logged in back the same setting you will see okay so nothing you will lose let's talk about the demanded profile mandate profile is almost same as a roaming profile when a user has a mandate profile they can log on to different computers and get the same desktop settings but user will have restriction to change anything so mandate profile usually used in uh, uh, the banking sector where whatever changes they have made uh, admin have made for the user those setting user will get what that mean is user will not able to change the wallpaper user will not able to access the control panel whatever restriction have done on the mandate profile those things user will not able to change it everything user wanted to change it will prompt to enter the password admin credential so mandate profile something which used widely used in banking sector the insurance sector where the security is must okay so this all about the uh, windows 10 and 11 profile if you have any question please put the command and i will happy to answer your question thank you very much hi there in this video i will talk about little bit not in deep but just a little bit to give a right answer to the interviewer what are the differences between below windows 7 10 and 11 options log out log off sign out and lock screen well log out log off and sign out these three things are same the name is given differently but the functions are same when you log out of course whatever running in the machine that will be closed out those application would be closed out and your machine would, would be log off log out or sign out lock screen something is different like you just a safety app let's say you are just wanted to go away um, for some time from from your desk so what you do what you do you will not log off your machine because you wanted to log in back again to work all right so in that case we will just log the screen not log out or log off or sign out 
well log off option we will get only in windows 7 that is now outdated but of course we have log out sign out option you can see in the windows 10 11 so let's look at some example so this is my windows 10 machine let me run something edge browser and what else i can setting option okay so right now what i will do i will log out from the machine so right click on the start menu go to this option and sign out so now i'm getting here sign out that that what that mean is log off or either log out that is same okay so sign out now what happened whatever the whatever the application was running earlier inside my account that will be completely closed out okay so let's log in and let's look at all right so now you don't see anything which is running earlier okay so when you lock the screen everything would be the same all right browser one explorer now i will just lock the screen okay now it just locked the screen i just wanted to back again on my desk and i just wanted to continue the work till end of my day okay so let's log in again i'm just back so difference between sign out log out and what else the lock screen lock screen is different between log out log off and sign out so lock screen something which you can use while you just wanted to go away sometime from the desk okay while you're working in the company you just wanted to go away from the desk you wanted to away from the desk for some time and just wanted to come back to continue the work okay so that time what you will do you will select lock screen when you do log out when you just completely you just wanted to leave for the day okay so log out log off sign up whatever option you will get but make sure when you're answering this question log out log off and sign out these three options are same not to be confused they are same okay the lock screen something is different just your screen would be locked and all application whatever it is running that will be remain same once you logged in back again okay all right if you have any question just put the comment and i would happy to answer you thank you
Hello there, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn service desk analyst, IT support interview, question and answer. And thanks for that, you have completed the course and this is the time we need to prepare for the interview. So let's get started. What is an operating system? Operating system is the application that communicates with hardware and software. Without operating system, we cannot install any software on it. What is the difference between client OS and server OS? Client OS system is like Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. We use client operating system for daily work and only 1% can log in at a time. Server operating system used to manage all network resources. Editions of Microsoft operating system. Home edition, professional edition, enterprise editions. Recommended hardware for Windows 7, 8 and Windows 10 32 bit. 1 GB RAM, dual core and 16 GB hard disk required, all right. Recommended hardware for Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, 64 bit. 2 GB RAM, dual core and 32 GB free hard disk need to be required. What is Microsoft Office? Microsoft Office is a daily needs software package which comes with Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Outlook and OneNote. What is Microsoft offered O365? O365 is the latest version of Microsoft Office 2016. What is Outlook and how to configure it? Outlook is an application that used to manage emails. To configure Outlook, we need to go to control panel. We need to open the email and we need to click on show profile and we need to select add and we need to fill out the information to get the configure user profile. What is ticketing tool in ServiceNow? Ticketing tool is an application where we manage request, incident and change. Every IT must have this tool. What is ticket priorities in the ticketing tool? Low priority, medium priority and high priorities. Low priority, system slowness. When we raise low priority ticket, system slowness, internet not working, outlook not working, SLA 48 hours, medium priority tickets. If user is calling back you and saying that nobody have contacted me yet and I need to deliver some urgent project. If I not, we will lose some kind of stuff. We will lose the money. In that case, we have to mention in the ticket and we need to in increase the priority from the low to medium. So as mentioned here, the user has requested to make this priority as he needs to deliver the project. SLF for medium priority ticket is 24 hours high priority tickets when we raise the high priority tickets if whole system is down the complete site is down all right more than 10 users are affected then in that case we need to raise high priority tickets and sla4 high priority ticket is four hours that mean that should that ticket should be resolved within four hours what is itil Information Technology Infrastructure Library, it's a full form of ITIL. It is designed to manage IT infrastructure. What is the difference between request and incident? Request could be anything which use user requesting first time. Easy software installation, RSA -E token request, shared drive access, new hardware, additional mailbox. Incident, we can say incident like the application is already installed and having some kind of issue. It's not working like that. Software not working, OS working slowly, unable to open the network drive. This kind of stuff comes under incident. How to reset the password? Open Active Directory and user and computer tool. Find the user and reset the password. We have done this, um, the practical. How to fix an account lock, lockout issue? Ask the user to log out from the all devices where he she logged in with an old password then reset the password again using user and computer tools and we'll ask the user to log in again sometimes if issue not resolved we need to clear all the password with saved and credential manager that's it fox we'll see you next session thank you Hello there, welcome back in question and answer part 2. So let's get started. What is class A, B, C, D and E IP addresses? In class A, the IP will start from 1.0.0.1 1 .0 .0 .1 to 126.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. 
subnet mask would be for class a ip address is 255.0.0.0 for class b the ip address will start from 128.0.0.0 to 191.255.0 0, 0. for subnet mask for class b is 255.255.0.0 for class c ip will start from 192.0.0.0 to 223.255.255.0 i originally put it one dot so just leave that just one single time subnet mask for class c is 255.255.255.0 for class D, IP will start from 224.0.0.0 to 239, 255.255.255. It is reserved for multicasting. Class E, IP address will start from 240.0.0.0 to 255 and 3 times 255, not 5 times. Just added additional, okay? So just, just 4 times, not 5 times reserve for research and purpose so these two ip address you will never seen on your computer if you go to your command prompt and you will type ip config you will uh, mostly get the ip address from 192 from your home network if you in the office that mostly you will get on this range all right what is internet and internet well what is ip address ip address uh, called uh, internet protocol ip address used to connect to different devices all right i mean without ip address we won't able to communicate bit between two computer so ip address is the internet pro protocol which used to communicate two devices what is internet and intranet internet sites can be accessed over public network but intranet site only can access inside company network or over vpn what is dns domain name server is a standard protocol that helps internet user discover website using human readable addresses without domain the internet would collapse it would be impossible for people and machines to access internet server by the friendly urls they have come to know what is dscp explain the dora process it's responsible the DHCP server responsible to provide IP address to the client machine. machine. DORA process called DORA, D as in discover, or as an offer, request, and acknowledgement. What is Active Directory? Active Directory is the role of the server which manage object and attributes centrally. How to share files and folder? right click on the folder which you wanted to share go to the properties select sharing tab click on share in the option you can share the folder with everyone or particular user what is difference between workgroup model and domain model workgroup model not centralized not secure no cost very tough for administration it is used i mean workgroup mostly used in net cafe not in the company domain model it's very centralized secure cost matter i mean you have to buy the server license copy you need to buy, you need to hire the people who handle the domain so cost is the matter for domain using a small medium and large size organization which remote tool we use to connect user machine remote assistance skype microsoft team cisco webex and bumgar difference between 32-bit and 64-bit operating system 32-bit operating system only support up to 4 gb ram 64-bit operating system will support up to 2 tb ram it's mentioned 256 gb but it support up to 2 tb or 6 tb ram also this depends on the operating system editions what is difference between fat 32 and ntfs fat 32 support 2 TB partition and TFS support 16 TB partition. Partition, when I say partition, it's like C drive, D drive, it's a partitions. What can you do to optimize hard drive performance on Windows? To optimize hard drive performance on Windows, I will use disk cleanup and defrag to speed up the hard drive and computers overall performance by 
optimizing file system. What do you know about the blue screen of death? BSOD, that means blue screen of death. Means while running OS, suddenly user machine stopped working and user can see blue screen with some code. It means machine have hardware issue like RAM or hard disk crash. Thank you. Let's meet you in next session, which is career in service desk. Thank you.